<laughs> yeah, it won't be long until I cut my fingers off with this thing. What's going on everyone? Back with another episode of Stuff and Things. It is time for another 5 Minute Friday and today should be a pretty damn cool one. So if you've been following along to all of the videos I've been posting lately, you may know that I filmed a knife banter episode with the guys from Blade HQ. I basically just brought some of my top five choices for EDC knives or knives that I have carried the longest out of everything that I've owned. And it was a pretty cool discussion. It was right after SHOT Show, so we were kind of dead. But if you want to check that out, I will leave a link for it right up here in the corner as well as a link in the description down below. Now during the filming of that knife banter, Zach actually hooked me up with a knife that I wanted the second that I saw it come out. And we've also partnered up to give one of those knives away, so if you want to find out more information on that, definitely check out their video. You could even pause this video and go watch the knife banter if you want to, or just wait till the end of the video. You could pause this and go watch the knife banter, and then not even watch this video, that's fine too. But if you want to find out more details about the knife that we are talking about, stick around because today we're taking a look at the CRKT Provoke. So if you grew up around the same time as me, chances are you are a fan of the Transformer series, and that's exactly what this knife reminds me of. This is a new knife coming from CRKT. It is known as the Provoke, and basically they are calling it a Morphing Karambit. The first time I saw this knife was actually on Kickstarter, which Joe had successfully funded. And since then, he worked out a deal with CRKT, that way they could bring this to the masses a little bit quicker, easier, and at a lower price point as well. If you know a little bit of the background on Joe, you will know that a knife that is very unconventional like this is definitely his speed. As a quick summary, looking back at some of his other knife designs, basically he will take a knife, and then he doesn't actually find a problem with the knife, but he finds something that a lot of knife makers do, and then finds a different way Way to do it that could possibly make the knife a little bit better. For example, some of the pocket clip choices that he has done on some folding knives, as well as some lanyard hole options that he has done on some fixed blades as well, so this thing definitely fits his whole kind of style. So there's actually a ton of cool things about this knife and how it folds up on itself. This allows you to carry the knife relatively safely, but then also have very quick access to it with that big ring. And then on top of that, you have the super rapid deployment without actually changing your grip on the knife. The pocket clip also has a very cool design. It is nice and low profile, and I will show you how it works here in a little bit. But because of the way that it sits so flush up against the knife, you will not have any hot spots when gripping down on this thing. The Hawkbill style blade is made out of a D2 steel, and it has a total cutting edge length of just under two and a half inches. Because of that length, and this not actually being a gravity knife or an auto knife, that will actually make this thing legal in a lot of places where knives are sort of frowned upon. The handles or the actual frame and locking mechanism of this knife are made out of aluminum and the entire thing is black which is a huge plus in my book. And while it does look very funny, the coating does feel very nice and with all the bevels and everything around this knife, it actually leaves it feeling very comfortable in my hand. So first and foremost, when someone sees a knife like this, especially a karambit, they are going to automatically assume that it is great for self-defense, which it obviously is. I'm personally not super crazy about carrying a blade for self-defense, but if I were to pick one, this would definitely be a good option. Now I actually have been carrying this thing around for the past like two weeks now, and I'm not saying this is an EDC knife, but I've definitely pressed it into an EDC type of roll. And while it is kind of awkward and not exactly what this thing is designed for, it actually did a pretty damn good job. Let's talk about it being folded up first when it is folded upon itself just like this. This definitely changes a lot of the dimensions of this knife and it does make it feel a little bit funny in the pocket. When extended, this thing has an overall length of just under seven and a half inches, so it's definitely pocketable, but like I said, when it is folded up, it does get a little bit chunky because as you can see here, the pocket clip, it just is, it's just awkward. Now the way this pocket clip works is pretty ingenious. You can see there's a little bit of milling back here on the pocket clip, and if you press down on that, it actually lifts itself up from the frame of the knife. So if I just grab it right there, pinch down to make that little gap, I can slide this thing right into my pocket, and as you can see, I would consider that a pretty deep carry. There's just a tiny little bit of the knife poking out of the top of the pocket there. I can still get into my pocket very easily, pull that thing out, put my finger through the hole, and have really quick access to it. Now the way that I have actually been carrying this knife is up here in my coin pocket. Because it is wide, it takes up the coin pocket on most jeans very easily. Again, I'll press down on that clip, slide it in, and then it actually hangs out of the pocket a little bit, making your access to it even quicker. 
Now as far as using this thing in EDC tasks, like I said, it is really not set up for that, but it can definitely be pressed into that role. If you want to open this thing a little less offensively, you can just kind of press up on the blade with it facing away from you. And now with that Hawkbill style blade, it kind of points downwards and it makes it very easy to open packages, boxes, letters, cut some twine. I never really thought that I would like to use a karambit for EDC style tasks, but it definitely has some utility to it and that is why it is used by people in agriculture and even first responders nowadays. This thing is a little fingerprinty right now, but the titanium nitride coating is super slick. It is much what you would expect on a lot of things that come titanium nitride coated. And I guess the only thing that I would really have a problem with is the locking mechanism. It is a very stiff lock. The actual lockup on this thing does feel very tight and obviously when you're holding this knife it makes the lockup even tighter because you are pressing down on that mechanism. Whether you have it in reverse grip or just a forward grip like this, like you're slicing open a box, I really don't see that lock failing anytime soon. The thing with this knife though is that it is so cool with the way that it opens and closes. You would absolutely be lying to yourself if you pick one of these up and say that you are not going to play with it. So to disengage this lock, you have to pull up on this little lever back here. You can sort of do it with like the fat of your finger, but it makes it a little bit easier if you can get in there with your nail. Once that is released, the blade folds right up on top of itself just like that, and it is completely safe to touch. Now, can you open and close this thing one-handed? Obviously, you can open it one-handed. To close it, you just kind of press on the latch and then flick the knife out a little bit like that. It may not be the easiest thing in the world, but as you are sitting around playing with this thing, you will definitely get the hang of it. There is a little bit of jimping on the back right here where your thumb rests that you actually push on to open this knife. And if you ever get the chance to play with one of these things, I definitely recommend it because that is one of the most satisfying feelings ever. Is it going to be practical for everyone? Probably not. This is definitely in my collection now more for the cool factor than anything else. But if you are very into karambit style blades or maybe you carry a knife for self-defense, this is definitely going to be a very good option for you. There are just so many cool things that I like about this blade. I know we're going over five minutes. I'm typically not into chisel ground blades like this where it is flat on one side and then just ground down on the other. But they did actually put a very nice edge on this knife and this thing came wicked sharp right out of the box. Like I said, I've been carrying this thing around for about two weeks now and let me grab some paper to cut quick. Now I have not tested this because I have just been opening boxes and typical EDC tasks with this thing, but let's see if we can get some little curlies on here. Yeah, that is still pretty damn sharp, especially with a chisel ground blade coming from CRKT. That's pretty impressive. So I could go on and on about this knife, but I just wanted to give you guys a quick rundown to show you some new hotness coming from CRKT. Super cool design and I definitely recommend checking it out if that is something that you're into. Right now the Provoke is coming in at about $200 on Blade HQ, but if you don't want to buy one, I would definitely recommend going and checking out their knife banter video with me as the guest and they are giving one of these away like I said. So huge thank you to Zach and Jamie and everyone else over at Blade HQ for having me on as a guest. And another big thank you to Zach for snagging one of these before they went out of stock because I knew they were going to go fast. They will be back soon though, so depending on when you're watching this video, maybe they are in stock. If you want to check out their site, I will leave a link in the description down below. And again, I know I went over this fast, but if you guys have any questions on the CRKT Provoke, let me know in the comments down below and I will try to answer them as best as possible. Man, that thing is so satisfying to play with. I think that's pretty much all for now, so if you guys are new to the channel, consider clicking subscribe. I make new videos every week, and that is going to be all for today. So, as always, thank you guys for watching, and I will talk to you in the next one.